Welcome to the Thriving Farmer Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Kilpatrick. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and celebrate sustainable farming. We believe that you can build a profitable, sustainable farm that gives you true farm freedom. Join us as we talk to farmers, innovators, educators, and entrepreneurs to glean their top takeaways in business and life. Hey, Thriving Farmers, Michael Kilpatrick here. So today's episode is with Annie Lopez. Now, Annie runs a farm and also a website called rollinghomestays.com. And kind of the idea of the website is that farms all across the U.S. have usually places that could park travel trailers or fifth wheels and that they would be a great place for people as they're traveling across the country to stop and check out. So she has this website and uh, she talked us through exactly how she started this, kind of how farmers can get involved and the benefits that farmers can have from having these sites on their farm, anything from people coming in, helping with labor, some volunteering to people traveling through purchasing farm products to just kind of getting out there and having more people on your farm and see your farm. So jump in, check out the episode and join me in welcoming Annie to the show. So Annie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Annie, can you talk to us a little bit about your farming operation? Yeah, sure. So we have a small farm, a Seeds to Saver farm. It's a five and a half acre farm in Elizabeth, Colorado, which is a very fast growing area. I've been here for about 20 years, but only started really farming it about when I uh, left teaching about five years ago. So we're a seed preservation farm. We preserve heirloom strains of flowers, vegetables, herbs, and grains. And we seed preservation is really our main focus here. So we, as a culture, we've lost, actually as a world, we've lost about 80% of our seed diversity in the last 100 years. So Mm. we feel that preserving that diversity is really, really important. And so we teach seed preservation from here and we go out into the community. People come here and they, we host them and we teach them and they learn. And so it's sort of a nice exchange, works out well for everybody. So we, yeah. Yeah. And so then that actually rolled into what we're actually going to talk about today, which is your website, rollinghomestays.com. Right. Yeah, very much. So talk to me a little bit about that background of how you started working with that. Well, specifically, I guess how we started Rolling Homestays is that we took a sort of unplanned three-month trip down the Pacific Coast. So we had found found a a fifth wheel that we uh, wanted to buy We'd been shopping for an RV and we found one in Washington state for $10,000 less than we can get it for here in Denver. So we, yeah, we were like, well, I guess we'll go to Washington. So we went to Washington thinking that we would just come right back, right? And be back for Thanksgiving. And that ended up not being the case. So we drove down, we left our farm in mid-November and drove to Washington to pick up the fifth wheel. And then we were like, let's just drive. So Mm -hmm. we went, drove down the Pacific coast and as farmers ourselves, we reached out to other farms and sought hospitality. And we were just amazed at how incredibly open and welcoming places were. We were able to just, you know, we we were able to park somewhere and either we would help them out or we would, you know, support them by purchasing, you know, their products or attending their classes and it was just such a great experience. We had just an amazing experience and met incredible people. And just, so it sort of grew out of that mm-hmm. kind of, you know, being able to, you know, that trip and just having such a positive experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. So you said you had a teaching background and so you were teaching up until about five years ago and then you started the farm. Yeah. I was a middle school teacher Okay, um, and I would take my, well, well, I'll back up just a little. I grew up in Ogallala, Nebraska. So I grew up in an ag community and, you know, just knew that lifestyle. I, you know, grew up, my friend had a ranch and farm and so kind of grew up on horseback. And uh, even though the farm wasn't ours or in our family, I learned a lot about farming and ranching. And so it always appealed to me when I was a teacher, I was a middle school teacher and I 
would take my students to Washington, D.C. every year. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we would do is go to Mount Vernon, which is the home of George Washington. And we were there in May. And that was when they would have their seed and plant sale every year. So Mm -hmm. I brought home seeds from George Washington's home. And that was sort of it. I just was really captured by the idea of preserving strains that were important and special, I guess. And Mm -hmm. so that was really was my entry point. I caught my gateway seed was that sunflower. And since then, so now we have seeds from Shakespeare's library and from Van Gogh. And so we started and from, and several Native American strains of beans and corn, including the Cherokee Trail of Tears bean, which was the bean that was carried by the Cherokee as they were marched from Georgia to Oklahoma. So that just was really capturing and the thought of preserving that. And then the more I learned about seed preservation, then the more I realized the importance of it and how what has occurred as far Mm -hmm. as losing that heritage in the last many years. So that Mm -hmm. was kind of where we got started with this. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So who would you say have been your mentors or who have you deeply learned from over the years? Yeah, so I've learned, you know, from a lot of people, I think over the years, you know, I think we all do, certainly as we grow as farmers. I would say, though, the people who I'm really inspired by are a lot of the farmers that are right here in my community. And, mm-hmm. you know, we were in an agricultural heritage here is agriculture here in Albert County, Colorado. And so actually that kind of came from so we have actually co-founded a nonprofit called the uh-huh. Elbert County Agricultural Alliance. And we, that grew out of, we actually had a crew here. It was like six people who were staying here who were learning seed preservation from us, helping us on the farm. There was a local lavender farm who needed a hand doing harvest. And so we kind of showed up with a crew and got our whole field harvested, you know, in a day. And it sort of turned a light bulb on for us. Just like, you know, we should help each other. We should be more invested in, in a community of farmers and producers and agriculturalists who can support each other and support each other's businesses. So we formed the, um, co-founded, it wasn't just us, it was several of us, but we co-founded the Albert County Agricultural Alliance. And so now we are working with the uh, county with the Albert County commissioners and also with Elizabeth Park and Rec to uh, build a homestead education center where people can learn what it means to be an agriculturalist, whether it's producing or animal husbandry or greenhouses. And we plan to have classrooms. So we're kind of in the process of doing that right now, but it's a big project, but it's one where we're really invested in. So those, I guess, you know, directly answer the question as far as mentors is I learned so much from the people around me that are also working hard to grow in this really difficult growing environment. Mm -hmm. So it's, they've, uh, I've learned a lot from them. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about the agritourism site because that's, you know, I saw you online, you commented on one of the uh, posts and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I really want to dig into this because I think this is a huge opportunity for a lot of farmers. So talk to us about kind of the concept and and you said you kind of developed this as you're coming down the California coast and trying to figure out, you know, about this aspect of, you know, sharing the farm site with people that are interested in learning more about farming. Exactly, exactly. And I I really appreciate that you see that potential because that's how we feel about it. You know, we're farmers too. And so we design rolling homestays really with the needs of like, you know, small farmers in mind and even homesteaders, you know, people who are working hard to work the land and just, you know, really invested in that. And sometimes we see, I know I see a lot on on my Facebook groups, you know, or whatever that, you know, farmers or homesteaders who just want a hand now and then, you know, who just, and have something to exchange for that, you know, for whether it's knowledge or their product, you know, buy beautiful grass fed beef or, you know, buy your plants or whatever your produce from that farmer. And we really just felt like when we were traveling the opportunity to learn and to help, but also we appreciated that very fresh produce and food and being able to support farmers as we went, you know, being able to be 
a way, you know, an income source or, or whatever, where they really didn't have to put much out. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we allow rolling homestays allows RVers who are looking for an agritourism experience to connect with those farms or homesteads or orchards or breweries or whatever. And it's a place where they can find it because one of the things that we found when we were traveling is, you know, it was extremely time consuming. Mm-hmm. I was on the phone all the time. I was on the phone or I was on maps constantly looking for, is there a farm? Is there an orchard? Is there a vineyard? Is something nearby? And we've been making phone calls. And so, and, and it turned out great, but we thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice if there was something easier, you know, that mm-hmm. it would be easier for people who are traveling to find this kind of, you know, destination where they can park and help out or explore or, or whatever, but that that happens between the, the farmer and the traveler. Mm-hmm. So basically how this works is they go ahead and get listed on your site and then mm-hmm. they have to build out a, a location on your, their farm that people could park their rolling and you call them very specific type of camper or mm-hmm. RV. Right. So that's a good point. Really I guess when we entered that kind of world of RVing, which I'd never done before, when we took this trip, I I had never been in that world before. So it was all really new to me. And I really discovered an entire large, actually, population of people who are either full-time RVers, a lot of full-time RVers out there, or just, you know, travelers. And a lot of people who travel in RVs are boondockers, Mm -hmm. are people who are self-sufficient. And self-sufficient kind of in a different way that farmers are self-sufficient, you know, and, but there are similarities there. And the great thing is that farms, and a lot of times we get that a lot of in a misunderstanding is people are like, oh, well, I don't have hookups. I don't have power. I don't have water. Mm-hmm. You don't need any of that. People who are boondockers, and there's a lot of them out there, are completely self-sufficient. You know, we carry our water. I mean, sometimes we did ask farms for water and that was usually not a problem, but we never needed power. Or, mm-hmm. or anything like that from them. You know, it is nice though, if a farm is a host, it's really nice to be able to say, hey, you can go dump your rig like, you know, 10 miles down the road. Or some people have their own septic and they're willing to let them dump into that. We do that with our own rig on our own farm. But, you know, it is nice to be able to offer that. But really all you need as a farmer or as a homestead or destination is a fairly level piece of land. Mm-hmm. where they can and most farms have that you know you mm-hmm. have a place where you park equipment or you know we park behind barns and we park like under trees and we park like out on the prairie I mean in parking lots you know we park at the back of a parking lot and you know or where the parking lot meets the vineyard or whatever I mean it was you know mm-hmm. they're not fancy it's just mm-hmm. you don't need any you just need a place to and I think people are concerned travelers too are concerned about safety you know mm-hmm. our viewers are I see in a lot of my RV groups, you know, it's like, what do you do about safety? What do you do about, you know, especially like, or someone traveling alone? And it's a safer feeling to know that you're parked at a farm. You know, you're not just on out in the open or at some Walmart parking lot or, you know, or some random spot in the town. Right, exactly. And this is something where, you know, you are in a place where there are other people or whatever, and it's a much safer feeling. And it's, Mm -hmm. and And the farmer themselves also, they don't really have to, you know, you can interact with guests as much or as little as you'd like. I mean, it's not, you know, some places it was like, there's your parking place, have a nice day, you know. And then there were some places that were like, hey, yeah, come on in and do a wine tasting. Or, Mm -hmm. you know, there were some places that we just went into their shop and we bought pastries and coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it just depends. Of course, all farms are different, but yeah. So what you created the site for was trying to make a unified way for people to a list their places, give people kind of like a idea of what it should look like. And then also when people are trying to travel, give them a, an idea of what the plate they'll expect at that location. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, we kind of, I guess we sort of see it like, you know, sort of match.com for RVers and farms, you know, and, yeah. you know, and your transactions are your transactions. You know, there's nothing beyond that. Once, mm-hmm. you know, if you want, if you want help on their farm, if you just want to sell something, you know, I guess we kind of like match.com, you know, we don't care who pays for dinner, right? Yeah. You know, once you've connected, then it, then you go from there. So gotcha. How do you fund the website? How do you keep that running? So there is a subscription uh, cost and we have, I do run and it, it's a yearly cost and it's very low, but it helps us to be able to run the site and, you know, pay for hosting and 
all of that kind of thing. So it's not very expensive, but it's, and it's once a year. Hmm. So it's a, it's a, you know, you, if you have labor on your farm for a day, you've more, (laughs) way more than paid for your subscription. Yeah. If you've been enjoying this episode so far, you're going to want to head over to growingfarmers.com backslash free resources and download our free resource bundle to help you shave hours off your week and become a thriving farmer. It includes resources such as our 10 winter growing secrets we wish we knew when we started, which is a ebook which talks about the tips and techniques to get better growth in your winter production. We teach things like the simple but counterintuitive principle that trips up most beginning growers, the shape and size of tunnels that are best for winter production, how to prepare beds so they are weed free and get beautiful lush stands of crops, what to do about pests like aphids, voles, and slugs, how to fast track your research to fine tune your production for your microclimate, and how to pack in more crops for higher yields and profits. So head over to growingfarmers.com backslash free resources and download your free resource bundle today. So let's say I wanted to list our farm tomorrow. What would I do? I go to the website, join, pay the the entrance fee, and then... And then set up a profile because that's really important. What we're having a lot, what we're finding is that people, and we're working on that because, you know, we're always working on something. (laughs) But what we're finding is that people are registering, but they're not necessarily going through the next step of creating the profile. And... Uh you know, if you don't have a profile, people can't see you. Yeah. So we just, just sent out a batch of emails. In fact, this morning, just saying, you know, make sure you update that profile and put your picture up there and, you know, tell people who you are because otherwise you're not being seen. So, mm-hmm. so we're trying to communicate that a little bit better with our customers and make sure that, you know, help them in whatever way they need help to get their profile up there and running. And we can, you know, we can do a profile even for you if you need it, you know, we, we can do that for you. So not everybody is super tech savvy, you know, mm-hmm. but That's really key, you know, to go on there and create a profile. And then for RVers, they do the same thing and they go on and create a profile and then they can find you and when they're traveling. And for the farms, a lot of it is sort of set it and forget it to some degree. Mm -hmm. You'll receive, um, hopefully, (laughs) people who want to stay with you. Yeah, stay there. It's nice to be able to, you know, just have someone that brings their own home. You know, Mm -hmm. they have their own home. They have their own they don't really need anything from you except a place to park. Exactly. Gotcha. So what are the common concerns that people have about starting with rolling homestays? Yeah, we do hear, you know, of course people have questions and and concerns. Our number one concern without question is liability, liability and liability insurance. And that's our absolute number one question. And it's, it's an important question. What we find is that the places that are already agritourism destinations like vineyards and breweries, obviously they have all of that in place. If you're a business, Mm -hmm. that's done, right? But homesteads or small farms or, you know, that's, it's, you don't necessarily have that, but we're pretty involved in the agritourism world here in Colorado. And what we really have found is that the industries, the tourism industry itself within the States are really recognizing the value of agritourism and how much it can bring, you know, to their coffers, basically, that that it's a it's a money generator. And so they want to protect that. And mm-hmm. so what we're seeing is that here in Colorado and in Indiana, Georgia has done it, Washington State, lots and lots of states have adopted statutes that protect agritourism destinations. Much as about 30 years ago, the ski industry here in Colorado began protecting the ski the ski resorts because skiing is dangerous inherently, mm-hmm. right? You can die skiing. So they started to pass statutes that protect the ski industry. So you can't break a leg skiing and then sue this, turn around and, you know, sue the destination. So same with agritourism. What we're seeing is that statutes are being passed and you can look that up on, you know, you can Google your state and look at the agritourism statutes there that are protecting uh, destinations from any kind of uh, litigation against them for injury and death, actually, is what the Colorado statute states. So that's something you can definitely look into in your state. That's not a substitute, of course, for a conversation with your insurance agent. But it definitely is is a good step. And just to know that the states and the agritourism industry itself is behind you. 
and that they're really recognizing that the value and also kind of the, you know, some of the dangers of agritourism as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how's your model different than other online platforms out there? Yeah, so that's a good question. There are other platforms that connect farmers with tourists or people who are traveling or, or such. And one of probably the most well-known is, of course, Woof. And we love Woof. I just want to say, up <laughs> front, we love Woof. We've, you know, we've hosted many, many Woofers over the years. We've had some great experiences. But what we really found is that the times that we really liked and that we preferred were when people came with their own RV and that they mm. had their own home. We hosted a lot of people in our home. And we've taught a lot of people through that program and we do appreciate it. There are some caveats with Woof that we don't have and vice versa. There are some that we have that they don't have. The most obvious is that with rolling homestays, people come with their own home. They're Mm -hmm. responsible for themselves. You don't have to feed them. You don't have to teach them. You don't have to do, I mean, that's not an obligation. It's also not only open to organic farms, which Woof is. And Woof has a pretty strict no money exchanged policy Mm. where, you know, again, we feel that the business that you conduct once someone is on your farm is your business. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not up to us. So we don't dictate any of that. What we really found with Woof when we talk to other people about it and even in our alliance here, there's a vulnerability that goes with that when you're having people in your home. Mm -hmm. And, And a lot of people just aren't willing to do that, period. You know, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to have someone in my home period, but they're a lot more open to the idea of, well, what if they came with an RV and you don't really have to provide them anything and, you know, they just accept a place to park. And if you want to, you know, and people are just a lot more open to that mm-hmm. concept. I find Wolf is wonderful. They've done great stuff. And there's some other sites that are also for, you know, more for like tent camping or. Mm-hmm. And really from the perspective of get outdoors and, you know, see the world. And that's wonderful. I mean, that's great. But our perspective is really more from a farmer's perspective. Um, Mm -hmm. We recognize some of, you know, some of the problems that farmers face and and we're trying to help Mm -hmm. that a little bit, you know, not so much just, you know, go see the world, although certainly that too, but that's really not. And and it really isn't for 10 campers. It's it's really for boondocking Mm -hmm. RVers. It's just not... Yeah, And there are other, you know, there's another that's sort of similar to us, but they're kind of, they really focus more on like wineries and golf courses and, and it's an overnight stay. Like, you know, they're pretty strict in an overnight policy. It's really just, as you move down the road, here's a place for you to park. Mm -hmm. But we really are like, you know, we want our hosts to be more open to, gee, maybe someone wants to park and they want to go explore the area or, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing where it's just a convenient place for them to come back at night you know, mm-hmm. and we really want to encourage that kind of thing. Not just like, okay, well, as you move, we're really going to serve as a Walmart parking lot for you, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. There's um, so much more beyond that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. How many farms do you have on the site now? Well, we have several farms that aren't showing up actually, because okay. we're working on that whole profile thing, but we have a few that, that are there. We have some in Georgia and Spokane, Washington and some right here in Colorado. So we're starting to see more people sign on, which we're very, very excited about. So I'm mm-hmm. um, going to help those people who have profiles but aren't showing up. So we yeah. need, to, need to work on that. But definitely more and more people are showing interest and in, in signing on, which we're very excited about. And we've received wonderful help from the Colorado Academy for Rural Tourism, mm-hmm. the CRAFT program. And so they've given us a grant. And also we had a they provided us with a mentor who was just wonderful about and helped us uh, to formulate a uh, promotional plan. Mm -hmm. So that's really helped us a lot. And then craft will actually will be giving us a small sum of money to help us uh, do promotion. So that very cool. We're looking forward to that as well. Yeah. So there's opportunities for farms of all sizes and types, everything from like market gardens to larger scale farms, to wineries, to farm stores, to, yeah, yeah. breweries and meteries and yeah, anything, you know, that if you've got, yeah, anything like that. So what's your plan for the future with the site? Tell us about your growth plan. Yeah, yeah. So what we'd really like to be able, we want to build, you know, it as a community. And we also would like eventually have a place where 
not only would you be listed on Rolling Homestays, but as someone, an RVer, a traveler is looking at you as a destination, they can also buy like their tickets to your uh, sunflower maze or ah, that okay. you can, they can go ahead and book a tour or they can, or like say you sell like one of our farms here sells beautiful lavender products. And yeah. boy, I really love that product, you know, but now I'm, I've moved on. So to be able to stay connected there for those products and things that they want to uh, continue to enjoy. Gotcha. So also like an e-commerce for these farmers as well. Yeah. 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 And a lot of people, we find that a lot of farms, you know, don't have websites. They might have a Facebook page, but as far as that kind of, you know, being able to do that, we want to be able to help them to Mm -hmm. be able to, to move into that world. Very cool. So let's talk a little bit, let's wrap this conversation up. If you could pick one, what would be your most favorite farming tool? (laughs) <laughs> my favorite farming tool. I don't know if you could strictly call it a tool, but more of a method. So we live at where our farm is at 6,300 feet. We're mm-hmm. like on the high prairie. So we have a, a view from Pike's Peak to Long's Peak. So the entire front range of the Rockies. Wow. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And looking out there, all covered in snow right now. Yeah. <laughs> we got a foot of snow. The wind blows here incessantly. And we get lots and lots and lots and lots of sun. So it's very dry and we don't have the best soil. Mm-hmm. We're perched on top of, the, of, you know, basically granite. So I guess it's more of a tool that I gave up. Let me put it that way. When I quit using my tiller and mm-hmm. adopted no-till farming and permaculture methods, it was a game changer for us. Everything mm-hmm. changed. I stopped killing things <laughs> as much because it's so, that's so sad. Yeah. You don't want to plant things for them to die. And so we started building Hugo culture and mm-hmm. invest and started stop tilling, like I said, and do what some people call lasagna gardening and some people call composting in place. That was a game changer for us. Being able to retain that water to use, to really see it differently, see the land differently and to utilize it differently and work with the land, work with the biosphere rather than destroy it. And that's been huge for us. That's been just huge for us. So mm-hmm. we started with just beds, with Hugo culture beds, and now we've moved more into big sh- sheet mulching in large mm-hmm. areas. We planted a mini orchard this summer into a sheet mulch, and then we'll you know, build from there. But each year those beds improve and I can grow things I never could grow before because it Mm -hmm. just, you know, it was, the conditions here are fairly harsh. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely been the biggest changer for us. The biggest tool, I guess, has been changing our view of soil and really soil building. Mm -hmm. And that's been huge for us. Uh, So where can people find out more about you and your work? Uh, yeah, so we're on social media. Probably the best place for as far as like Rolling Homestays would be just come to rollinghomestays.com and, and join. We'd love to have you. So please mm-hmm. sign up. And uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram. And so is Seeds to Savor. So our farm is on Facebook. I'm not as uh, as good with Instagram as I, as I could be with Seeds to Savor, but I am on Facebook more. And we have a website, uh, seeds to savor.farm which is some information about us, but rolling homestays is really the best way to keep up. And, and like I said, on Facebook, Instagram, or come to our website, because that's where you can actually sign up. Yeah. And you've also got a Facebook group around agritourism, correct? We do. Yeah. We have, uh, it's called agritourism forum, Mm -hmm. farmers helping farmers. And it's a Facebook group. We're growing really, really fast right now. I just actually just got a new administrator this morning because I've cool. been looking for a new administrator and I was super excited about that. So, because I, it's, we're growing, it's growing really, really quickly. So it's a great site. We're super friendly people and I don't have to moderate. I don't have to jump in. Nobody's mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not rude. It's just, it's a really nice site. So um, yeah, that's, we're growing really fast. So we're the largest agritourism group on Facebook. 
Yeah. Well, Annie, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been really fascinating hearing about your story and also about the uh, rollinghomestays.com. And yeah, I think it's a really cool idea and that it could really help some farmers, obviously with their, you know, labor needs, being able to have people just come on and just check out the farm as well as, you know, finding that connection between people just traveling the world and uh, visiting farms as they went. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure to be here. All right. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You as well. So there you have it. Another episode in the books. So I'd love if you would hop on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and a review. Those mean everything to us. We love to hear what you're thinking. If you have a podcast guest that you can recommend, please pop on over to the Thriving Farmer podcast website and leave us a review. That's thrivingfarmerpodcast.com.